here in my garage. Someone stole my new Lamborghini, having fun riding in the Hollywood Hills. Do you know what I care about more than materialistic things? These books about ham radio and building antennas. So I thought it about time to upgrade my uh, G5 RV Junior. Um, despite being uh, too low to the ground, uh, one of the problems I have with it is uh, being stationary. Um, my house points north and I can only sort of look up and down Australia on the broad side of it, Indonesia at best. And the other problem is uh, the ladder line which acts as an element, <laughs> that's how far it is from the ground. So I had an opportunity to pick up a, uh, a Comet multiband dipole, uh, they call it a H422. And uh, the reason I got it real cheap was because it had a burnt out 20 metre trap that the, the model's notorious for. But when I opened it, it turned out fine. So I had to do a fairly ugly looking uh, mechanical repair and uh, then went on to uh, seal off all the end caps with silicon and uh, we got some tape, um, some of this is self-fusing silicon tape and some vinyl tape uh, just to waterproof the whole thing the best I could. Um, it looks like it arced across uh, the capacitor in the trap that's formed from the outside sleeve to the, the next element. Now if this antenna is uh, assembled in the V shape configuration it's uh, some 7.5 meters across the top of the V and there's no way for me to assemble that at the top of a mast in, in my backyard and then raise it as an assembly so it was uh, evident that I'm going to have to make some sort of mast with a pulley and a cable and also wanted to be able to lower it to tune it and get it back up easily uh, on my own preferably. So I've uh, come up with something for that. So for the main mast I've started off with a 3 metre length of 50 mil diameter tube which is a 3 millimetre gauge and then I've got another 50 mil tube with it's a lot heavier gauge which has been turned to sleeve inside uh, the main mast so that I can uh, rotate it from the bottom. For the outside sleeve I wanted something fairly heavy because it gets the U-bolts clamped over it to help mount the antenna on so uh, it's 51mm diameter on the inside so it slides up and down uh, the 50mm tube nicely and 63mm uh, on the outside. I've got a 50mm U-bolt and I uh, drilled a hole in the bracket slightly off centre so that most of the meat would be holding the, uh, the jaw clamp for the wire. Uh, that's the wire cable attached to the pulley. Uh, you can see the, the final assembly here uh, attached to the original U-bolt that uh, clamps the antenna to your mast and then you can see the pulley at the top where the cable feeds through and the pulley is centred on the pole. Now uh, the cable hardware itself is pretty standard sort of stock from uh, Bunnings Warehouse in Australia. Uh, it has the jaw clamp to hold the wire and uh, here's the pulley, it's uh, rated at 100 and something kilos and this is what it looks like outside of its housing. After clamping some timber to the brick column using a uh, threaded rod, I used a plumb bob to figure out where to drive a Rio bar into the earth uh, to keep the pole straight. This is a bit of a test set up to see what it was going to look like on the ground. Obviously when I want to fully raise or lower the mast I'm going to have to release one of the bolts from this clamp and pull the mast back a little uh, to allow the sleeve to go past the mounting on the strut. It's probably not required but I've got some silicon lubricant again from Bunnings in Australia uh, just to lubricate the mast and it's supposed to protect uh, all your hardware. I don't know how long it'll last. And the moment of truth, a little bit of testing with the cable and the pulley, um, it slides up and down. You'll notice the second time I, I give it a pull here that the antenna rotates right about there, swings around because of the slack in the cable. You'll notice though as the assembly gets toward the top of the mask, because the pulley is centred, uh, there's less tension in the cable and the antenna tends to correct itself. So I might need some sort of notch for a locking mechanism or I might get away with it. So I guess there may or may not be a part two to this video, but I think uh, that's enough to sort of explain what's going on. Apologies to my regular subscribers, I've probably bored you to tears. But there is some uh, grassroots electronics coming up soon, I promise. So stick about and see you next time.